Welcome back to Rock the GVM, folks. This is Daniel, and in this video, I'm going to discuss SBT. This tutorial is about all the essential SBT features that every Scala developer needs to know. So if you're getting started with Scala or SBT, this video is for you. Now, I recommend that you follow along with what I do here on camera to get some hands-on practice with SBT. This is not necessarily a coding tutorial, but it's a walkthrough about SBT and the essential features that you might need for your own Scala projects. And whenever you need to refresh your memory or you need to go back and check what an SBT configuration or feature does, just refer back to the video or the very long form blog post at the blog and I'm going to attach a link in the description. Now I'm going to start this tutorial from the absolute basics, which is the installation. So if you want to install Scala or SBT, you need to go to scala-lang.org, which is the host website for the Scala programming language. And if you want to install Scala and or SBT, you need to go here where it says install. Now, depending on when you watch this video, the setup of the website, the looks of the website might have changed, but there should be an install or download link at the very top of the page. And the page contains instructions for your operating system. I have a Mac, but you have a Linux, Windows, or other operating system with, with instructions for every platform. Now, if you're on a Mac, you need to simply copy this command and paste it into a terminal window. I happen to already have done that because I've been uh, running Scala for a while. So if you want to install Scala or SBT for the first time, feel free to pause the video and follow these instructions. Now, after you've done that, I recommend you navigate to a terminal window on your computer, create a new folder, and I'm going to show you what an SBT project contains. Right now in my new project, I don't have anything. So uh, if I do an LS, notice that I had I have nothing inside. And if you want to create an SBT project from scratch, all you need is a file called build.sbt. So if I do build.sbt, you can create a text file in your favorite uh, text editor. And build.sbt is essentially a Scala file that will have a special structure or syntax. So it's mostly resembling the Scala language itself, so you can write regular Scala code inside. And I'm going to show you what kind of thing you can add into this build.sbt. Let's set up the Scala version, for example. So I'm going to say Scala version, and I'm going to use a special operator called colon equals. And I'm going to use, let's say, 2.13.8, which is, at the moment of this recording, the latest SCA 2.13 version. And after that, I'm going to save it, and I'm going to run the command called SBT, exactly as it is. If you want to check the version of SBT, you can do SBT dash dash version to find out your version of SBT. Now, I'm simply going to run the SBT command inside this folder, which only has the build SBT file, and this SBT command will load the appropriate libraries and so on and so forth to be able to set up this project and it will create a bunch of folders in my new project. Now, when you hit SBT, you're uh, being greeted with a Scala REPL, which contains a bunch of commands that you can run inside this build tool. I'm going to quit for a moment, so I'm going to hit Control c to exit this REPL. And if you do an ls-la, uh, you will find a folder called Project and a folder called Target. Now, the target directory contains all the binaries that will be compiled by the Scala compiler, and Project will contain some additional files for SBT, for example, if you want to customize SBT in any way. Now, I'm going to enter build.sbt again, and I'm going to set up some other variables inside. For example, the version of the project. So I'm going to say version colon equals, let's say, 1.0. So notice that you can assign some global variables such as Scala version and version. These are globally uh, recognized variables by SBT. And these are project uh, scoped. So the entire project will have this Scala version and the entire project will have version 1.0. There are a couple of other variables that you can add. For example, the name of the project, which is, let's say, uh, Rock the JVM, and the organization. So organization... You can use the same operator, com.rockthejvm, something like that. So you can uh, save this file and you can run the SBT command again if you want. Now, the standard SBT uh, project will follow this structure. The project and target folders are auto automatically created by SBT. Now, at this point, we need to create a source directory. So I'm going to do mkdir-p and I'm going to have source main Scala and another one for tests. So source test Scala. So uh, if I uh, have a tree of 
uh, this directory, we have a source directory with main and test. And here we have Scala sources for uh, source files, that is for the program files and for tests as well. Now, inside the project directory, if I do cd uh, project, here inside we have a file called build.properties. And if we show uh, build.properties, here we have the SBT version with which we are going to compile this project. At the moment of this recording, we have 155, but you can change that if you want to upgrade to a newer SBT version. So now we have a project directory target and then a source directory. So let me go back to source main Scala and I'm going to create a package for the root organization of this project, which is com.rockthejvm. So I'm going to say mkdir-p, I'm going to say com.rockthejvm. And I'm going to change directory to this one. And then I'm going to create a source file. So I'm going to say, let's call this main Scala. And I'm going to insert a package. So package com rock the JVM. And then I'm going to have an object main with a bunch of stuff for the main method. So I'm going to have my def main with args, which is an array of string. And this returns unit. And then let's say this is just print line learning SBT, something like that. Now we can exit and then we can go back to the uh, main project. So I'm going to say uh, SBT at the root, so SBT, which will start the necessary SBT uh, shenanigans here so that we can run this REPL. And then I'm going to run a command called compile, which will obviously compile the Scala file into the appropriate bytecode. So this will trigger the Scala compiler and it will probably take a little while before the uh, Scala compiler is warm and then it will simply compile main.scala. It took nine seconds for three lines of code, which is quite disproportionate, but it will probably compile a little bit quicker if we uh, simply change main.scala and hit compile again. So it's uh, quite okay. Then we can run the application in main by using this command, run main, and then the uh, fully qualified class name, which is com.rockthejvm.main. And obviously this will simply invoke the, the bytecodes in the class file, and this is the output of the program. And uh, if you want to uh, trigger incremental compilation and hit uh, auto compile while main.scala is being edited in another directory or in some uh, other development environment or text editor, you can hit this tilde and then compile. And this will start a watching process for main.scala. And as main.scala is changed by some other text editor, we can uh, see this uh, file being, being compiled. I can uh, demonstrate that by uh, navigating to my desktop and a new project. And then I can edit. So I'm going to say vim source main scala com rock the jvm main dot scala. And let's say I would like to uh, say learn sbt auto compile. And then I can simply uh, write this file. So colon w and notice that the top compiler automatically compiled this file as I was changing it in another text editor. Now, this happens for all Scala files that you may have in the project. Now, if you want to change the definition itself in build.sbt, for example, if you want to add external dependencies, you'll have to exit the SBT console, so I'm going to quit, and modify your build SBT and then restart SBT yet again. So let's add an external dependency that is an external library to our project just to demonstrate how that works. So I'm going to uh, vim build SBT and here I'm going to add a new uh, library dependency by modifying a global variable called library dependencies. It's exactly called like this, so library dependencies. And then you can mutate this variable by saying plus equals, and you can add a new library. Let's say I want to add the fancy library from uh, Lihaoyi, uh, which is com li ha o yi. And then I'm going to use the percent symbols. I'm going to add two percent symbols and I'm going to describe what that means. The library name is called fancy with an S. And then the version is, let's say, 040. Now, 
This library will make sure that when SBT starts up uh, this project, this library definition will be downloaded from a resolver. It's usually based on Maven. So uh, because this library is available in Maven Central, SBT will download that as well and store them in uh, the uh, target directory where it has all these binaries. Now, about the percent signs. The percent signs, that is 2% signs, means that the Fancy library, because it's compiled with different versions of Scala, Fancy will be uh, downloaded from Maven Central as Fancy underscore 213. So this is automatically added by SBT and the suffix when you add the 2% signs. If you don't add the 2% signs and add a single one, you'll have to specify the Scala version, so 213, so 213, because most libraries are compiled with different Scala versions and they're not binary compatible with one another except for the Scala 3 track, which is a major improvement on that front. So if you're using Scala 2, you'll have to use the appropriate version of the library compiled for that Scala 2 version. The Scala 3 libraries will be binary compatible, which uh, eases up the development quite a bit. All right. Now, if you want to add more libraries, of course, uh, in real-life projects we have quite a bunch of libraries, you can add a sequence of libraries by saying plus plus equals and then add a sequence, and the sequence has the exact same meaning as the original Scala. So you can have a sequence with a bunch of libraries that you can add and you can mutate this by appending the entire sequence to this library dependencies variable. All right. Now, let me clear up my screen and run SBT again, which will start the necessary data structures for SBT. And if I hit compile, I should get all the uh, library definitions plus the uh, compilation of main.scala in check. And uh, let me actually use uh, the fancy library. So let me go back to main and I'm going to define, uh, let me add a tab. Tabs in Vim are quite uh, horrible. I'm going to have, let's call this uh, fancy string as fancy.str, if I remember correctly. And this is fancy color red wrapping. Let's say uh, this should be a red string or something like that. All right. Now, this fancy string, instead of uh, print line learning SBT auto compile, I'm going to print this fancy str, which will contain Unicode characters to have these um, color sets. So I'm going to have fancy str. All right, let's try this one out. So I'm going to uh, save this file, go back here and go compile. Okay, so we have a uh, write compilation, and then I'm going to say uh, run main, uh, then we have com rock the JVM main, and notice that the red string does show as red here in the console. All right, cool. So this is how we can use an external library after we've uh, modified build.sbt to include that library. Okay, now let me show you tests. So we normally write test uh, cases and uh, place them under source test Scala. Now, if you want to add a library dependency for tests, I'm going to vim build.sbt, I'm actually gonna quit and then um, operate on build.sbt again. And if you want to add a library just for tests, you can add, obviously, uh, you can add a comma here in the sequence, and then you can have, for example, Scala test, which is uh, org.scala test. And then I'm gonna use 2% Scala test. And the, the version at the moment this recording, uh, let me check my notes, it's 3.2.13. And then I'm going to add another percent sign for test. So test is a special token, which is a variable. This is a global uh, immutable value here known to SBT, which is the string test. And this means that this library is only available within the test directory. This is what it means. Okay. Now, let me uh, run the SBT console again. And this should start the SBT console. And let me go create a test file. So I'm going to uh, switch uh, windows here. So I'm going to check back the new project and I'm going to say uh, source main source test uh, Scala and I'm going to have a comrock the JVM. So I'm gonna have mkdir p. So I'm gonna have uh, source test Scala and then comrock the JVM. 
and I'm going to have, let's call Vim, and then I'm gonna say this other thing, and I'm gonna have simple test Scala. Now, I'm going to add a package, so package uh, comrock the JVM. Then I'm going to import, for example, uh, the uh, fun suite from Scala test. So I'm going to import uh, org Scala test uh, fun suite, I think, fun suite with a uh, lower cap S as any fun suite. Now, I don't know these off the top of my head. I have some notes so that I uh, know which types to include. And let me add a simple class. So class, let's call this simple test. And this extends any fun suite. And I'm going to add a small test. You have the uh, test video here on the Rock the JVM channel if you're interested in learning how Scott tests work. So I'm going to have a simple test. Let's call this um, simplest test possible and uh, going to add the appropriate braces so that I don't get screwed and uh, let me assert that Scala is equal or Scala dot to lowercase um, is equal to Scala. Okay, so this is my little class. I'm not going to elaborate on that anymore. So I'm going to write this and then I'm going to hit compile. And when I hit compile, uh, notice that Scala test is downloaded automatically. So uh, the library definitions are automatically downloaded as we hit compile and the compilation was successful. Now, if you want to run this test, you would hit this command in the SBT console. Let's say test colon test only. So just the uh, file that I will specify, and I'm going to use com.rockthejvm.simpletest. Now, the compile uh, command just compiled my source files, but it didn't compile my tests, and my test file has a compiler error because I've forgotten a parenthesis. So let me run this again. And notice that the test was compiled and it was successful. Notice the green uh, piece here, simple test, simplest test possible was successful, and you have some stats here for all your tests within uh, the scope that you specified. Now, if you want to uh, test uh, a variety of files, for example, if you want to match some regex or regex, depending on which camp you're on, you, you can say test, test only, and you can have a regex or regex saying uh, simple test. Because uh, if you want to specify this as a regex, you don't have to specify the uh, fully qualified class name. Of course, this will pa pass just as fine. Okay. Now, if you want to test, uh, test everything that you have under the test scope, that is under the test directory, you can simply call test, and this will uh, run all the tests in your test folder. Also, you can run the SBT test outside the SBT console. So if you quit the SBT console and you say SBT test, this will run the exact same command. And this is true for all the commands within the SBT console. So all the commands that I uh, wrote or executed individually within the SBT console, you can prefix them with the SBT command and they will run independently. All right, so this was absolute basics of SBT. In uh, the next videos in this mini-series, I'm going to show you some more complex features of SBT, including multi-module projects, configurations, and custom tasks, and much more. So stay tuned for the next video, and subscribe to the Rock the JVM channel if you haven't done so already. I'm Daniel, signing off.